rate of um, poverty here it was over 70 percent last year of free and reduced children and uh, a lot of these kids come from homes that they can't afford healthy things let alone try to feed them and their refrigerators are empty and and uh, a lot of these kids don't get fed a meal in the evening. They eat breakfast and lunch and they don't really have a whole lot else and I think it really helps these kids to learn better and be in school and not be hungry and not worry about that, you know. Well, we have free lunches and breakfast for everybody. It means we offer a bag lunch at, after school and we have a, um, a fruit and veggie snack program that we serve to all the grade school kids. My favorite school lunch is baked potato bar. It's packed lunch. It's chili. South shell tacos. Tater tot hot dish. Baked potatoes. Cheesy bread. <coughs> chili. Cheeseburgers. Well, the high school has alternatives. We have something in the rotisserie, we call it, where it's always like a cheeseburger or tacos or, you know, hamburger or pizza or something. And there's also a salad bar that we have that 4th um, grade through 12th grade can eat from. And then um, elementary, the lower elementary can order it and we make the salads ahead of time for them. Or it, let's say... Well, we also have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on hand, too, as well. If, if, hopefully they'll like one of those items. If not, then they're a really picky eater, usually, but um, nobody leaves here without being able to eat something. Maria Frank and I'm a senior this year and I am the vice president this year of Students Against Hunger. We started before I was here as focusing on working with Kids Against Hunger which um, sends meals overseas mostly. They do about two-thirds overseas and one-third in the local community and then our group has expanded to do local volunteering as well so I really like that balance mm -hmm. that we get to have a global reach, but then also do local things so we can see the people directly and do it in person. Um, for this semester, our last event is a bake sale that we're having on Tuesday um, in Moose Tower down by the Caribou, kind of. Okay. And the money from that will be going to um, buy supplies for meal packing, um, is what I would imagine. And we had a haunted house this mm -hmm. um, yeah. fall, as you know, and the money from that is going to be going toward a meal packing session that we're going to be doing actually with an organization called Matter, which is a local organization that's very similar to Kids Against Hunger. Um, and that will be in January or February. We're still figuring out the details, but it'll be like right away, or probably our first event in the spring is our hope. Paul 
Hauge. I am the Emergency Food Services Manager at Keystone Community Services. We work with Second Harvest Heartland and the food group um, for the lion's share of our food. Um, but we, we also get food from individual donors, community gardeners, things like that. The reason that we are here is so we can, we can lift some of the constraints on, on some people's budgets. Um, you know, when we, can, when we can sort of take care of the food part of their, of their budget, then that releases some of that money that they would otherwise be spending on that for things like rent, utilities, and things. And because it's close to the beginning of the month here, it's an order day here. I would venture to guess um, she'll see between 60 and 75 families today. Every month we distribute, gosh, it's, it's been as high as uh, 65, 70,000 pounds worth of food. It's a lot. It is a lot. Um, I think in 2013, we don't know what the stats are for 2014 yet, but 2013 we distributed between our three food shelves uh, 2.05 million pounds of food um, to over 80,000 duplicated mm -hmm. clients. Fewer um, school-aged kids are in school for a longer period of time mm -hmm. during months like this or in the summer months and so what you see is you see an increase in, in need um, because they may not be getting their their meals at school. Yeah. We've got a set weight it's uh, for every one you know it, it's tiered every person in the household every additional person gets a certain amount of pounds more. Um, we distribute weighed food um, like I said, the dry goods, perishable items, such as milk and meat, and then the, the fresh produce um, and bread that we get in, that's totally free, and they can, they're welcome to take as much of that as they want. I think there's going to be more of an emphasis on, on health outcomes in the future. Um, what we're doing is we're providing food, and we're try we're, we are definitely trying to um, make sure that our food is healthy and nutritious and we use we use guidelines. Now I'm working on um, some different projects. We're setting up a mobile food shelf, um, food mobile, and we're going to be driving to different locations and doing distributions there okay. for folks with limited mobility. Yeah.